Newspapers.com had millions of wonderful articles that might contain stories about your ancestors. And when you find a newspaper clipping that you want to attach to Ancestry.com to your family tree, how do you go about doing that? We're going to talk about that next. Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee, and this is Family History Fanatics, where we like to teach you how to climb your family tree and have a whole lot of fun along the way. Today, we're going to talk about newspapers.com. We have a previous video about the great things that you can discover on newspapers.com. Be sure to check out that video using the pop out links or the description below. Now, although we're talking about newspapers.com, it's important that if we want to clip newspapers to our ancestry media gallery, like you see here, notice I have a lot of these little newspaper clipping for Henry David Townley. And what we're going to do is we're going to add more stories to this gallery. And it, so we have to go over to newspapers.com and find articles about Henry that have not yet been attached to Ancestry. I start by typing Henry David Townley and go ahead and press this search button. Right now I'm just focusing on the fact that he lived in Cincinnati, Ohio. Let's go back to Ancestry and figure out what the years were. So I zoomed in on Ancestry.com so that you could see the years that he lived there, 1877 to 1940. Now I'm going to filter to 1877 to 1940, specifically in Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm going to press the show advance link right here. And then I'm going to type in my location. Once I have done that, I press search and I start looking for articles. What I'm really going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take out David because in newspapers, you don't always have to put all of the names. So let me go ahead and filter that back down to Henry Townley. So let's go ahead and click in on this one. And this says Dr. Henry Townley, veterinarian in Cincinnati. So this is the right gentleman. Now we're going to zoom out and we're going to see that the article starts over here. I don't have any great suggestions on how to clip part of an article that starts at the bottom of another column and then the top of a column, how it continues in old newspapers. So I would either clip the entire article or just clip where your ancestor's name is found. And then when you see the article, you'll have to um, remind yourself that you need to look at the entire article. So let's zoom in and go through that process. So we want to clip. We click on this clipping button and we get this bounding box right here. And it has these little marching ants going around it. You can use your left mouse, left mouse button if you are on a computer and hold one of these boxes and shape it to the size of the article you want. I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit larger than the article just to suggest that I need to clip this entire article and read it later. And I'm just going to add a few little notes. So I'm just going to say this article is Dr. Townley helps round up a cow. <laughs> it's actually kind of a funny story. So now I can add little notes. Maybe I can extract some of the information about the actual story, but if I want to try to remember, wait a minute, this is just a little segment of a larger article that spans across multiple columns. As you can see here, I added that notation. So then I'm going to press clip. Now, this is where we are going to go ahead and add this to Ancestry.com because in the previous newspaper video, we talked about clipping and then a they, all of our files will just stay on um, newspapers.com. But if we want to transfer for them over to Ancestry like I did here, then I'm going to press the Ancestry button. How easy is that? Actually, it's quite easy. Now, if you happen to have multiple family trees in um, Ancestry, you're going to have to select the tree that you want. Now, Henry Townley is on my Geisler Brown tree. So all I did was click on either the name or the drop down menu, and then I go and select the tree that I want. 
And in this case, I know his name is Henry David Townley. If you happen to have more than one individual with um, the name Henry, you probably want to go ahead and type in the middle name or any identifying uh, pieces of information. Let's go back and see. If I just put in Henry, then I have a large list of individuals. He happens to be right here. But if I can't find him because I have a name like John Smith and a thousand John Smiths in my tree, then you can add a little bit more detail and grab his name. Press next. And now we're going to see that it's successfully saved to Ancestry.com. Woohoo! So we'll go over here to Ancestry, refresh. When I pressed refresh, I didn't see the article. So one of the tricks is to sort by newest. So I'm going to press sort, newest, and here's my newest clipping. I really don't like the name newspapers.com, the date. How can I change that so it's like Henry Terrence first property? Well, I can go ahead and click on that um, article. It is the one I just clipped and press edit. Then all I'm going to do is delete that information. Now it says Dr. Townley. Oop, I misspelled it. Helps round up a cow and press save. Go back to my gallery. Now I can see exactly what I needed. Now, one of the things that I learned when filming this video is that when you are trying to decide if something has been clipped or it hasn't, if an entry has these arrows, it means somebody has created some clippings from that newspaper. If it does not have any kind of markings, it is a page in the newspapers that no one has created any clippings on. And if you scroll further, you're going to get to one with the little scissors over at the top and a little dash lined all the way around. That means you have clicked the article. So just keep that in mind. Those are some of the ways newspapers.com tries to tell you if you've seen an article before. Um, some of your clippings will be in the arrows, uh, but sometimes, like we're about, I'm about to show you, the clippings are for another article on the page. So don't get confused because it confuses me all the time. Let's go down here to this entry that I found. This looks to be an obituary for Catherine Townley. One of the things I wanted to show you is that you can clip this article to not only Catherine Hab Townley, but also to everybody that is in this article. As I said before, when you have the two little arrows on that previous page, it means somebody has clipped something on this article, but not necessarily you. And that's why you see this blue bounding box. But notice over here on Catherine, I don't have that box. So I'm going to clip, just like I showed you earlier um, with the previous article, I'm gonna clip this one and I'm going to give it a description. There's my description, an obituary for Catherine Townley. I press clip and I'm gonna go through the ancestry button and I'm going to go find Catherine in my tree. Sometimes I like to use the unusual um, name. There's lots of Catherines in my tree. I'll show you, Catherine. There's a lot of Catherine's in my tree. And sometimes I just like to use the one that thing that's unusual to quickly find the name. So I'm going to type next. And now it's attached. But, but remember, there's, there's a couple other names. There's Asa Townley here, mother of Jean, Pat, and all these other folks. I can add them to the article very quickly. So link to another person. I'm going to type Asa H. Townley, this one right here. And I can add for the rest of the um, folks who are in my ancestry tree. And then when I'm done, I click save. And now that newspaper article is clipped to not only the first person that it was attached to, Catherine, because it's her obituary, but every other person I go ahead and tag. So have fun tagging right there and making sure your articles get to everyone's profile. There you have it. That is how you can set transfer 
articles that you clip on newspapers.com to ancestry.com, have them in your gallery, and it makes it a whole lot easier to keep your files in one place. If you have any further questions about newspapers.com and Ancestry, be sure to put them in the comment section below.